Welcome to e Know How. In this video, uh, what I am attempting to do here is, I myself am trying to learn about the PCI Express and then I am trying to put together what I learned so far. So PCI Express is a, a data bus, is a data bus to transmit data uh, serially, is a ser transmit data serially at very high speeds like for example, 1 gigahertz or more. So what it does, what, what it uses is say you have a transmitter and you have a receiver here. So there are two lines, there are two wires for transmitting the data and then you have two wires to receive data back. So total of four wires are used but there is no clock in this no clock so the uh, so this four wires is called a link it is a link and then you could have combination of like say 1x 2x 4x 8x such links can go up to 32x so uh, this each link, but each link will definitely have four wires, two for transmit and two for receive. And now um, the clock is recovered at the receiver. Clock is recovered from the data stream, and I have not yet uh, studied how it is done. I have not did, uh, done that. And also the data is transmitted in terms of like say one byte of data needs to be transmitted then there is a protocol that's used a digital protocol where the 8 bits of data is converted into 10 bits and transmitted and this is mainly for aiding clock recovery so say for example you have you have all zeros or all ones so you'll have tough time um, recovering the clock so so for aiding the clock recovery, there is the data is basically encrypted and sent, there is a 8-bit, 10-bit uh, protocol. So that is sent over there. And now let's, uh, and also what, uh, let's look at uh, how it is done or, uh, so this data transmission is done by using a LVDS method. This is basically low volt low voltage differential signaling differential signaling low voltage differential signaling what what this is is like so you got these two wires that are between the transmitter and the receiver and the receiver is here and the receiver usually has very high impedance so basically there is no uh, current flow into the receiver but at the receiving end this wire is uh, terminated usually by a 100 ohm resistor 100 ohm resistor and uh, you get the differential uh, signal here between these two points but really uh, the the receiver, the RX, would, is usually high impedance. And now from the transmitter side, now if you look at the transmitter side, <clears throat> what we are trying to do here is, say for example your VDD, or I'm not sure if it is operates out of VCC, which is the higher voltage. So it could be say 3.6 volts or 5.5 volts for example. And VDD internally used is 1.2 volts something like that approximately <clears throat> so i i tried just for uh, uh vdd supply uh, trans uh, transmitter and the lvds transmitter is nothing but you have a current source and then you got four switches i'll show how those are implemented i actually did try a method and um, what what are the problems using that method so there are four switches. 
so s1 and s so let's let's call this s2 s3 s4 so at one time s1 and s2 are on and also these connect to this is one of the output the other side is one of the output and this is a usually a very high resistance that's used but I it need not be there in this diagram but so we have the plus output and say the minus output here and now S1 and S3 are on at one time and S2 and S4 are on at one time so actually the S2 this is the plus output here so if S2 and S4 are on the current flows this way so you have approximately 3.5 milliamp current source here and then the current flows this way goes into the resistor comes back out so if you have 3.5 milliamps flowing through this it develops a 350 millivolt voltage across the resistor and that is sensed and now if S1 and S3 are on so the current flows in the reverse direction through the resistor and back here so now you develop min minus 350 millivolts and that is sensed at the in the receiver so now I try to construct actually a driver for this so what I did is basically I had a I am operating at uh, 120 nanometer uh, 120 nanometer and uh, 1.2 volt devices so basically I tried to uh, get a current uh, mirror here and I put say 175 microamps here and then uh, I multiplied it 20x this is VDD of 1.2 volt and so I was expecting 3.5 milliamps here and I took this and I implemented the switches using P channels here and N channels for the ground switch so now we call this a plus here we call this minus here and so you have uh, P1 and N1 these are on at one time and P2 and N2 these are on at another time when you are transmitting a zero so <clears throat> P1 and N1 and this side is ground and this is ground and now I attempted this and what happened is basically here at this point you you were this this transistor is being uh, crushed because you got like a P bias uh, here and uh, we don't have um, enough VDS across this to get the the three three point five milliamps I could only get around one 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 point five or one point five milliamps with these uh, devices and then so I could actually develop a 150 millivolt signal here 150 millivolt and then it had a to adjust the strength of the P P1 and N1 and P2 and N2 P1 and P2 are the same size so I could get a common mode at this level so so you have um, so when you call this here at this point you call it out <coughs> out plus and out minus so when you are switching so this is the time and I'm switching at a nanosecond every nanosecond uh, every nanosecond I, I'm switching the data so uh, to drive these to drive uh, these so I had to basically take in a signal and then kind of uh, 
try to get a similar um, basically go, go through some kind of a a circuit that uh, r removes the delays between uh, f the, r the f rise and falls so basically you have an inverter here and then you buffer these and so you buffer these two and these two are basically used to drive these these two signals are used to drive these gates the P and N but whenever it switches I could actually see say for example out, out plus was assume it was good like you got like out plus is here and out minus is here you got the 150 millivolt but when it switches either depending on the way the circuit is designed it basically both of them go this way and then uh, there is then it kind of turns around so both of them go low so and then turns around and then same thing happens here when it turns around both of them go low here and then it turns around back again so I could I could get 150 millivolts here I have to try it out with a higher uh, VDD or a VCC supply and different transistors so to avoid these to avoid these basically away going away from the common mode uh, I kind of try to devise uh, uh, a circuit where I sense these two I put a resistor two resistors here which are like say 500 ohms each and then take this node which is then put a little capacitor on this to kind of get a good DC value not a big one a less than a puff or a puff and then compare this node what I call VCM here VCM and uh, I have uh, make a current mirror here basically I pump in some current so what I do here is I have these two branches differential so one of them is uh, this is VCM here and I have out plus and out minus so out plus is here actually the connection is um, let me go back and draw it so the connection is like this this is the common mode voltage here and then I have these two where you have out minus and then I have a current source here on these two places current source and this goes can connects here so what happens is basically I have like these two uh, voltages that are being generated here so if out plus out plus and out minus say for example the dip down here or the dip higher say for example they went the other way before you know switching they went the other way <clears throat> so if out plus and out minus are higher than the VCM voltage here so all the current is diverted into those branches here and uh, this P gate would actually go high so now what I do is I use this this voltage to add an additional current source into this using the voltage from here so I call this P gate and then I use P gate here so if you do this actually I was able to reduce these swings they doesn't go all the way now it's like for example switches here they did they, they do fall but they kind of do this they do this they don't do they don't fall uh, well below you know whatever is this common mode here so this is one trial I did especially I was more interested in the output uh, buffer so I tried to do this and I know the input buffer will be more like a sense amplifier 
like you could have this uh, differential pair receiving those two signals and then uh, you could amplify that basically I have not tried that yet but I might be doing that soon when I have time so it's basically the out plus and out minus and then you could further amplify this or sometimes you could even have cross couple but this is uh, most likely it will be this arrangement for the the input buffer or the receiving end so it's pretty interesting I learned something about the the high speed and I think it's kind of the speed uh, is limited actually by the technology too so if you go say 120 nanometer you might have a certain speed so because when you're talking about like you know switching the data is switching every nanosecond so you got like every nanosecond you're transmitting a high and a, a low so if it changes this is your input and then your um, the differential uh, outputs are like this they keep switching here I couldn't get this clean switching I need to work on that and see what how to get that so this is basically limited by technology itself you cannot expect to go like a take a 600 nanometer um, technology and try to get this fast switching so that's what I learned so far on the PCI Express